All right, so I'm going to answer some questions I get about my tartar raised beds and also the three foot fire rings. Um, this right here is what I grow my asparagus in. I've got two of these, one on a different part of the property. This is the easiest one for me to discuss both at the same time. Um, the tartar raised bed, you can get at most farm supply places. I don't remember the cost. It's been several years since I bought this. This is three foot by eight foot. And I created it in a hugel culture style where you put uh, wood mass in the bottom to fill up a good portion of it so it takes less soil and then you put soil on top of it. I think I mentioned in a previous video and if you haven't seen that video, I also mentioned that I wish I would have never done that. And the reason being is because as that wood breaks down, your soil drops. So when I first put asparagus in this bed, the soil was all the way up to the top. And as the wood decayed over the years, it dropped down probably about half full. So if I'm going to do raised beds in the future, I'm not going to do that hugel culture thing. Um, it might be okay if it's beds you are okay with putting soil in every day, like wooden beds. You know, I, I literally have to put soil in these almost every single year. It gets compacted. Not only that, the wind blows it away because soil mix you get from the stores is way lighter than like clay soil. So it's just something you got to deal with. You're going to have to put soil in your raised beds every year. Um, but back to this. So the one regret that I had was I did these in Hugel culture format. And of course the soil went down. Um, but I mean, everything grows in them great. There are some things I got to caution you about. And this is a good one. As the sun beats down on this all day long, metal, the soil temperature that's in this gets astronomically high. Matter of fact, let me stop this video and I'm going to get a temperature, soil temperature probe and show you the difference. Anyways, I've got a uh, three-way soil probe that does fertility, pH, and temperature. And it just so happens to be the batteries have gotten weak since the last time I used it. Even though it powers on, the buttons aren't working correctly. So I can't actually show you the soil temperature. However, I can tell you that if I laid my hand right now on the side of this metal, I'd probably get burnt. The sun is literally right above it. It's been shining down on it all day. And if I lay my hand on top of the soil, I can feel the heat coming off of that soil. So, if you are going to grow vegetables in these types of beds, what you have to do is put a heavy layer of either straw or wood mulch or wood chips, wood flakes or wood chips on top. And I'm talking maybe three to four inches thick. That's probably about what I've got in there. It's about three or four inches thick. Now, I prefer to use straw. I take it, I break it up into pieces. You can see it's no, no huge clumps anywhere. And that's what I prefer because plants very easily grow through this. It's not like they're trying to poke their head through something that's hard and resistive. They actually just grow in it fairly easily. Now I planted the asparagus Huh, I don't remember what day it was. I'd have to look in the previous video. And right there is one of the new ones coming up, as you can see on the screen. So it is coming through the straw, no problem. I expect the others to be coming up within a day or two. And I do have to water these about with the heat right now. It's basically May 15th, and I literally have to water these about every two or three days just because the temperatures have been like summertime temperatures already and it's literally been like mid 80s and higher all week 
Uh, and even though you got that straw in here or you put wood chips in it, it will retain some moisture. But the part that matters is actually the top inch or two or three of the soil. And basically what I do is I move the straw out of the way, check it. If it don't seem like it's moist enough, I go ahead and give it a drink. Now that's very important when you're first growing asparagus or any other vegetable. Until they are up out of the ground, you need to give them an ideal condition. And the ideal condition is not to let that soil dry out. So once they're up out of the ground, you can reduce the waterings. As long as you got straw or wood chips or wood flakes on top, that will actually help retain the moisture longer. And you won't have to water near as much in like the summertime when the temperatures get crazy high. But that is one of the things about growing in steel grow beds is that the soil gets much warmer, much quicker. So what that also allows you to do versus an, a wooden raised bed, the soil will also get warmer quicker than say the ground, but not as fast as metal. I know it sounds confusing, but it's so hot outside my phone kicked off. Anyways, a wooden raised bed that's up off the ground does heat up quicker than the natural. So hot outside, this will be the fifth take because my phone keeps shutting off. Anyway, so a raised bed that's made of wood will also, the soil will get warmer. And I'm not sure where the video shut off, so I'm going to kind of recap what I already did. Um, but a raised bed that's up off the ground, the soil will get warmer than the actual earth's ground. Um, what that allows is that you can start cool weather plants maybe a week or two earlier than if you were planting them in the ground. That works out great. A steel bed like this, um, they heat up even more. One, it's higher off the ground, so there's more surface contact on the sides for the sun to hit. They heat up much hotter. They get a lot hotter just because the metal uh, conducts that heat way better, converts the sunlight into heat throughout the soil much quicker. Um, but so you just have to use a mulch pretty much. Whether you use wood or metal, you got to use mulch. One of the things I want to tell you about this steel bed in particular is that the bottom is a solid sheet of metal. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that you drill enough holes into this that you can get water draining out from it. And what I did was, because this is on a hill, I took and put a couple of bricks on that edge over there and then all the way through there, I drilled about 25 one quarter inch holes. So even though this looks like it is primarily on the ground, which a big portion of it is, probably about a half or three quarters of it's on the ground, this, this edge down here um, is not fully on the ground. And there is some ways that water can escape this if it does get too wet. These fire rings are bottomless. They work great. I raise a lot of trees, fruit trees, berries, and that sort of thing in them. They do great for blueberries, one blueberry per ring. I also have figs in those. I also, <coughs> I swear it's not coronavirus. <laughs> I also have pawpaws growing in them, five pawpaws, another fig. I got some other figs up there growing in them. So your smaller trees and your berries, raspberries, blackberries, uh, blueberries will all do good in these fire rings. They're three foot in diameter. I think they're about 12 inches deep. And blueberries are shallow rooted. So you need to make sure that you put mulch on the ground for them. Also, because those beds do heat up very drastically. So I think that's about everything that I wanted to cover. I get a lot of questions about this. Uh, people see the name tartar and they're like, oh, that's a, that's a feed water trough. Yeah, it is. But, you know, a lot of people use them for raised beds. And kind of the same way for the fire rings. Not necessarily always on my YouTube channel do people ask about things. But I also post a lot of pictures to my Instagram and Facebook accounts. If you're not members there, you should join or follow me or whatever, friend me or whatever it is. And uh, 
I post pictures almost every day of whatever I'm working on. And sometimes that stuff makes it into videos and many times it does not. So, you know, I'm just so busy I can't record everything I do. But that is also why certain times of the years I have a huge influx of videos. And then other times of the years it's quiet because I'm just not doing as much on the homestead. So anyways, hope this answers your questions. If you have any questions or comments, uh, don't, don't hesitate to ask below. I'll answer you as quickly as possible. I guess I'll add this on the end of the tartar raised bed and also the uh, fire ring raised beds. My grapes, I do a little bit differently. I put those in a foot and a half by three foot raised bed wood made out of two by twelves. And they do fine in this smaller bed. Again, you'll notice I got straw on top of them. That is to keep the water from evaporating. I got to water them less often. I've got another one right over here. I always let my straw age before I put it down. You don't have to. That's just something I've done over the years. I often have bales of straw sitting all over the place that are aging. Just ready for me to pick up a handful and top off a raised bed or start a new raised bed there's more up here i think that the aged straw breaks down a little bit quicker that's why i do that i don't really think that's you know okay for like the content but you can see pretty much all my raised beds have straw in them to some degree this right here is actually a fig with some other stuff in it this right here is a uh, persimmons there's another persimmons up there i use straw everywhere because straw is a whole lot cheaper than wood chips it breaks down quicker and that gets more nutrients into the soil faster and to wrap this up again as always god bless you god bless your families god bless your homesteads and by the way i bought that pergola off of amazon i will also link to it and the rapid test soil tester below thank you